You've been searching for the best way to generate passive income in your life and heard that real estate is a great way to do it. But you're tired of all the so-called gurus who are all talk and no substance. Get ready to celebrate because Kevin Buck has spent 14 years successfully making it happen. This is the Real Estate Investing for Cash Flow podcast. Now, here's Kevin Buck. Hey guys, Kevin Bob here, and I want to welcome you to another episode of the Real Estate Investing for Cash Flow podcast, where our mission is to help you build and maintain massive amounts of cash flow through income producing real estate investments. And our guest for this week's show is car wash developer and real estate investment expert, David Began. David is the managing partner of Wild Blue Car Wash, a highly successful exterior express car wash located in Colorado. David currently has two locations in operations, and we're going to discuss both of those today with him. David also serves as the president of the International Car Wash Association, supporting and representing the growth of the car wash industry worldwide. In addition to his car wash endeavors, David is a serial entrepreneur with over 30 years of broad business experience in a variety of industries. Now, I'll tell you, I've personally been anxiously awaiting having a car wash investment expert join us on the show, and so I'm really looking forward to delving deep into to David's business to learn everything about this niche, real estate investments. As you guys know, I love niches. Uh, we're in the mobile home park niche, so that is incredibly niche. So is car washes. So I'm excited to dive into David's business. But before we do, just have a few quick items I want to run through with you guys. First off, we are in acquisition mode here at Sunrise Capital Investors. Uh, I know you've probably heard me mention this the last couple shows, um, but we are in buying mode and we want to purchase more mobile home communities. So I mention this because we are open to joint venture arrangements uh, or paying out big finder's fees for those that bring the right deals to us, the deals that meet our criteria. So if you happen to run across a mobile home park opportunity out there in your search for real estate investments and it's 60 plus spaces in size and you're looking for either a team to, to, to partner with to help you take down the deal because you can't do it yourself. Maybe you don't have a track record or the capital necessary or maybe you're just looking to basically flip it for a profit and take that profit and parlay that into another investment vehicle. Um, either way, please think of me and my team. Again, we're actively buying. We've got capital. We've got the expertise. We can make the deal happen. You can email me directly. My personal email is kevin at kevinbup.com. And uh, we're looking for anything 500000 uh, all the way up to $25 million. So we've got capital access to it and have the ability to take down smaller deals, 60, si 60 spaces in size, and even very large portfolios should you come across a great opportunity. Okay. So again, kevin at kevinbup.com if you have something you'd like to discuss with me. Next up. We just recently closed on um, an acquisition up in New York, up in Buffalo, New York. And uh, I was a lucky one that was designated to head on up there. Uh, the good thing is not too cold yet uh, up in Buffalo, but uh, I'm assuming it's probably going to be snowing there any day now. But in any event, this is a, a beautiful park. It's in the Buffalo MSA. It's actually in Akron, New York. So it's about 25 minutes outside of Buffalo. It's a 122 space park. And uh, we just closed on it a few weeks back. And it's by far the nicest community now that we own in our portfolio. It's a four-star community, 98% um, occupied, uh, mostly double wide. Some of these double wides have one and two car garages attached to them, incredibly large lots, very well-maintained community. And the most exciting part about this recent acquisition, uh, as you kind of know, our MO is to buy things that have a lot of uh, a lot of value yet that can be achieved in them. And a lot of times it's by rental increases. So this community here, again, it's a four-star community. There are two other communities right down the road that are uh, ones of equal quality. The other one's actually a few notches below quality of our community. And uh, these communities range from $470 a month to $530 a month in lot rent. The community we just purchased, uh, the lot rents range from 260 to 290. So we are incredibly excited about this because there's a lot of room to grow as far as the lot rents are concerned. And again, it's 98% occupied. It's 122 lots. There are 120 that are occupied and they are incredibly nice homes. This community is beautiful. In fact, I don't know how to make it any nicer. So excited about that one and excited about more. So again, if you have any other opportunities that you'd like to discuss with us, Kevin at KevinBup.com. Um, uh, next up, guys, that kind of brings me to the, the next point I wanted to make. 
we're always looking for partners uh, that are accredited investors that want to passively invest with us in opportunities, okay? So maybe you're not looking to actively invest in a joint venture. You'd rather place your money in a proven asset class. You're an accredited investor. Um, please think of us as well. You can learn more about our company, uh, download our private placement memorandum directly from our website, and uh, just learn about our team. Uh, you can go over to sunrisecapitalinvestors.com and uh, learn about everything that we've got going on uh, in the mobile home park space. So again, Sunrise capitalinvestors.com. And lastly, guys, I happen, if you happen to be in the Tampa Bay area, which is where I'm located, I'm in Clearwater, about 25 minutes from the Tampa Bay International Airport. Look me up. Love to meet with you if I'm in town. And if you have some extra time, grab coffee or bite to eat or whatever you might have time for. Okay. Kevin at kevinbup.com. Again, that's my personal email. Reach out to me. Let me know when you're coming into town and we'll coordinate a time to get together. So now without further ado, I'd like to welcome David begin to the show. David, how are you Kevin, doing today? Kevin doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Absolutely. I've learned so much about the mobile home business that I didn't know about here. So that's good. We're, we're two niche guys, right? I mean, that's yeah, what we we're talking about. Absolutely. Like the, the car wash niche is uh, incredibly niche. I mean, it's kind of one of those, you know, you're sitting at the table with a group of new people that you've never met before. Maybe it's uh, some work friends of your wife or something like that. And, and uh, what do you do, David? Well, I'm in the car wash business. They're like, what? I've never met anyone in the car wash business before. And I kind of yeah. have the same conversations, you know, what do you do, Kevin? And you know, the, the eyes kind of glaze over sometimes when I tell them that we own mobile home parks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in fact, I like the reaction. It's kind of it's a fun conversation to be a part of. Um, yeah. In any event, it, go ahead. If I uh, if I had a dollar for every time somebody said, "Oh, I wanted to be in the car wash business. I always wanted to be in it," you know, when I, when I tell them in the car wash industry, everybody everybody's interested in it, but uh, but they don't know how to get in it, or they don't really understand what it takes to run them or what it costs. So it'll be interesting discussing that. Well, you know, it's funny. I think that a lot of people, there's stereotypes that are associated with every different type of real estate. So mobile home parks is, is a trailer park, right? And so a lot of people just associate like a really bad, rough tenant base that does, you know, drugs and drinks a lot of alcohol and causes problems. It doesn't pay the rent in time. That's kind of what a lot of people associate with a mobile home park. And, uh, and not necessarily the same thing with uh, car washes, but at least to me, you know, I remember when I first heard about car washes when I, when I was first getting involved in real estate in my mind i thought wow these things are just like cash cows right you just go empty out the you know the, the change machine at the end of each day and you've got this big bucket load of, of, of cash that you're carrying home or carrying to the bank <laughs> and so a lot of people yeah, that's just, right in their mind are like man these things are just cash cows and uh um anyway so i, I want to talk about that i want to dig a little bit more in depth into the industry into your involvement in the industry and, and just you know the investment so but before i do that i want to talk about your background a little bit i'd like you to Take the mic and tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself, your background, and really how you uh, were introduced to this niche. Yeah, it's really interesting how I got in the car wash business. I sort of fell into it. I wish I had I could talk about some grand strategy that uh, I was planning for 20 years to be in the car wash business, but um, I sort of fell into it. I first started out of college working for a government. So I wanted, thought I wanted to be a city manager and got a degree in public administration and did that for about no, probably two years and decided that's not what I wanted to do. I, I just couldn't fit myself in a government environment. And then I went to work for a software company. So we actually did some installation of some application software in the government space. And I really liked the people I was around. They were really high, high energy people, smart people uh, doing things. So I went to work for that company and ended up being in technology for about probably 10 to 15 years working for different types of companies, large enterprise software companies in the sales and pre-sales area and also worked for startups. So I tried the startup boom back in the, in the early to, to late nineties mm -hmm. in the Silicon Valley and found, uh, you know, found that it's a lot more difficult than it really turned out to be. And then, um, did some sales training. So I was involved in some sales training companies. So helping companies develop sales methodologies to help their sales guys get better at what they do. And that was, that was a fun run. And then as my kids sort of became older, right around high school, I said, you know, I'm traveling too much. I'd like to stay home. So I'd like to figure out if there's a business that um, is I can do locally that would allow me to stay home and uh, and kind of see my kids the last five or six years of their high school, junior high career. And for whatever reason, I just said, you know, car washing is an interesting business. It's one of these things I think a lot of guys like to go to a car wash and see all the mechanical things taking place and the, and the, the, the process of it. They get kind of fascinated with the idea and the process. And I, I felt like the market here in Colorado Springs was a little bit underserved. And so I did some investigation and back in 2002, 2003, started looking into it. 
And it literally took me three and a half years before we opened our first car wash. Hmm. And so we opened our first one in 2006 and our second one in 2008. And we're actually working on a third one right now, which will be open kind of on the east side of Denver, uh, hopefully at the beginning of next year. So it does does take some time. And a lot of it is a real estate problem. It's a real estate component. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, being patient with that is important. But then I, I got into it and liked it and learned a lot uh, about the car wash business and Got pretty involved in some regional associations and then ended up getting involved, asked to be involved in the International Car Wash Association, which is a trade industry group here in the United States, primarily the United States, but also does work in other countries in Europe and, and Australia. And I've been on the board for that for about five years, and I'm currently the the, the president, uh, the board president this year of the International Car Wash Association. Okay. So, Fantastic. Yeah. I, I want to learn about the um, the uh, the educational journey that you took to <clears throat> diving into this niche. Did you seek out a, a mentor, um, other operators in your local marketplace that you kind of leaned on? Or, I mean, did you just dive in both feet first and kind of learn trial by fire? Yeah, we, we relied on distributors. So there's typically a distributor network of equipment, and, and most large cities will have a distributor or multiple distributors of car wash equipment and supplies and chemicals. And there was one in Dallas that I just hooked up with. We, we moved from Dallas uh, back in 2001 up here to Colorado Springs, and I had a friend who had a car wash in Dallas, and he said, well, get with this guy. He's really good and got to got to know an individual in, in Dallas, Texas, who kind of mentored me for the two or three years as we were kind of looking for property. And he educated me on the things to look for, the things to steer away from, how to kind of evaluate sites and, uh, you know, s steered me in the right direction, gave us a, a, a great equipment package and helped us build our car wash, our, our building and uh, make sure that everything was put in properly and we had the right equipment and kind of gave us some, you know, advice on how to get it up and running. So yeah, we, we, we did rely on some people to kind of help us get started. Got it. And now, when you started diving into this adventure, um, did you consider at any point in time buying an existing car wash, or were you always looking at ground-up development? We were always looking at ground-up development, and, you know, I don't know why we didn't really look at existing car washes. I think the ones that were here probably weren't that exciting. There was a there was kind of a model shift in the car wash industry there in the mid early to mid-2000s from going from what I call a full service car wash. So a full service car wash model is where you get out of your car, they'll take it through the tunnel for you, they'll vacuum it, they'll wipe the windows down and wipe it down and then wave their towel at the end to tell you to come pick up your car. Um, that was primarily the model that most tunnel car washes were. And then in the early 2000s, and it was really an idea that came from Europe, this whole idea of exterior express where it's kind of a hybrid do-it-yourself type of car wash where you still have the tunnel component of it. So you have a hundred to 150 foot long tunnel. You stay in your car, you ride through the tunnel, get your car washed, and then you have the opportunity to do self-service functions at the end, either vacuum yourself. If you want to pull over and dry off your car a little bit, you can do that. But at that point, pretty much the experience is over with and whatever do it yourself uh, things that you want to do, you can do. And so that, that model kind of picked up in the mid 2000s and there was not any real exterior express car washes in Colorado Springs. So that's what made us decide, you know, we should probably build from the ground up. Got it. Got it. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. So there's a car wash about three miles down the road from our house and it's a, um, you know, it's a full service car, car wash. So you send it through the tunnel, you know, you jump out of the car, send it through the tunnel and at the end they wipe the wheels off. They, you know, add the, you know, the, the trim dressing and the bumper yeah. dressing and all that kind of stuff, vacuum it out and then wave their towel. You give them a tip and, but it, and I love that place because it, it, it's a thorough clean. I mean, even it's, I say, I feel like the wheels are the part that never get really all that clean. You know, there's always like brake dust and things sure, like that. Yeah. And, uh, just the other day that right down the street from my office, it's been there for about 10 years and it's the first time I've ever gone it's you you pull in you have to vacuum it yourself and then you go through the automatic car wash uh tunnel you stay in the car and at the end they just wipe it off and you drive away and uh, i pulled over at my office and i looked at it and i'm like the whole car is clean but the damn wheels <laughs> yeah yeah you know the, the the insides of the wheels so i guess if i want it fully clean then i've got to get out there at the town myself is kind of what you're saying that's yeah. kind of the, the, the new norm yeah, you know, it's it, it's what you're doing is you're trading time for money and quality. So, you know, you're you're balancing all three of those components. And the Exterior Express Car Wash 
it's a relatively low price point, you know, for a car wash, and but you can get through pretty quick. And the quality is 90 to 95 percent there. There's still going to be some areas that you know, that a machine wash might not be able to get. That if somebody was drying their car, would be able to get up and clean up. Gotcha. Uh, so you're 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 kind of trading that, and a lot of people, you know, time is more valuable now sometimes than quality or or money. So some people are, you know, a lot of people are very willing to kind of just get their car washed, keep it clean. Uh, on a regular basis, but not not pay a lot of money to do that. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I'd like to talk to you about locations. You know, what makes a suitable location for a car wash? I'm sure there's a whole checklist of of, of items that you guys look for: population, ingress, egress, traffic counts, uh, uh, income demographics. Uh, just give me a general overview of what makes an ideal location for you guys or for your next car wash adventure. Yeah, it it is very much a retail experience here in the u.s and and ironically in europe it's not and i'll talk about Mm. that a little later on it's actually you have to seek out the car washes in europe a lot of it has to do with the you know they don't have a lot of land that's available there um but in the u.s it's very much a retail retail experience so you're looking for the same type of retail locations that you would if you were buying a 7-eleven or a gas station so you do want you know high high density i like high density i like to look at the one and three and five mile radius of population and the more density that's out there, the, the, the better. Obviously, ingress, egress is important to be able to get into the site. So we're fighting for the corner lots like everyone else is, mm-hmm. you know, the banks and the CVSs and the pe- people like that that would, you know, want, want to be in the corner. So you've got great visibility. You want traffic speed to slow down where you're at. So you're either coming up to a stoplight or you're leaving a stoplight help. So if you can get people to slow down, where you're at is important. And, you know, we look for about a little less than an acre. So I see these types of car washes being built on 30,000 square feet uh, pad sites all the way up to maybe an acre and a half to maybe two acres. And some of that depends on the number of self-serve vacuums that you want to have on your property um, for their, your customers. So very much a retail experience. Is it as simple sometimes as following some of the major retailers around, like kind of seeing where Target's going to put their next location or where, um, let's say, Whole Foods or a Walmart? I mean, or is there a lot more science to the uh, location selection than just following some of the, you know, how, how I think of it is like these larger retailers, they've obviously got, you know, entire departments that, that they, you know, they fund with millions of dollars to do their, uh, you know, do their market research. And so, Assuming that they're going to put a location somewhere, is that potentially a good ideal location for you to follow? Yeah, lots of, lots of guys do that. Lots of guys will follow the Walmarts and the Targets and the grocery stores. You certainly want to be part of a retail experience because I mm-hmm. think people, they don't necessarily, you know, you, you, you look at the traffic patterns and what people are doing. Are they going home? Are they going to work? What side of the road are they going to work on? What side of the road are they going home on? And so you think about those things, but... Uh, you know, the other part of the, the equation, and people tell me this, and it's hard for me to believe, but I believe it, is car washing is more of an impulse purchase. And so people are thinking they don't plan a car wash. Hmm. They, they're they driving, oh, i got to get my car washed. And most people will do it when they're out doing something else. So it's got to be part of a retail errand experience many times. And having lots of retail around you helps that that process. If you're one thing about Walmart and Target is sometimes they'll make an investment in an area of town that uh, there's not many people. The 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 density isn't that high. It's more because of a destination. They, yeah, because they 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 are a draw, and if you can sort of hook into that, you'll benefit from it. But sometimes we I know some people that have been, that have built car washes, you know, close to Walmart's, but they're so far out right now. It's going to take years for that hmm. to get to its um, volume levels that they're looking for. So got it. It got depends. It. Okay. Yeah. So going with this, uh, and, and, and help me understand, what, what's the name of the uh, the, the most uh, the most popular car wash now? I mean, as far as like the, um, it's not fully, um, it's not full express, I guess. Or what is it? What's the name? What, what's the name? That yeah. You know, the so the, uh, yeah, the, the, the term is called Exterior Express. Okay. Exterior yeah. Express. Okay. So in That's the right. Exterior Express model, 
are there other income streams that exist? Like, so for example, I gave you the, the, the car wash I go to down the road that, you know, you jump out of the car, they run it through the tunnel, it comes out the end, you got to walk inside, pay, but on the inside, there's air fresheners, there's beverages, there's, I don't know what else they sell in there, a bunch of, bunch of tchotchkes. So there's additional yeah. retail income there. And in, in the, uh, in the express exterior model, there is not, is that a correct statement? Yeah, yeah, I would say for the most part, there's not typically other revenue streams. Now, we do have companies on, on our sites. We, we've contracted with a company that does windshield repair. Okay. And they'll, they'll, they'll approach a customer who's vacuuming very politely, if it's the right person, and say, hey, would you mind if I check your windshield? And they'll do a wind, windshield chip repair, and they'll make some money, and they'll give us so much okay. money for a chip. So there, there's a little bit of money in that. Um, we've had guys with big sites get ice machines. So sometimes having a, a ice machine on site um, has helped make money. But for the most part, the revenue stream is just the car washing part of it. And then there's, there's simplicity to that, which helps you run that, right? So Full serve car wash operators, you know, the guys that are really, really good at it are the guys that are there every day dealing with customers, watching the employees, making sure the quality is what it needs to be. In the exterior express market, you need to manage these washes, but you don't always need to be on site as much because it's really more of an operational business. And your goal is to make sure that the car wash is operationally functioning the way it needs to. Um, you know, if is it cleaning properly or the chemicals getting out on the on the car that you need it to? Are you drying the car? If those things are all working fine, the rest of it flows pretty much automatically. Okay, so I want to talk about the staff requirements of your model. Um, I'm assuming there at least has to be one person around in the event of mechanical failure, or uh, I mean, well, I, help me understand that. Is there any staff at all, or or no? Yeah, no, there is staff. You, you, okay. you definitely need some staff. And so you need one person to load the car. So you got to guide the car onto the car wash okay. conveyor. So you've got to have somebody guiding that person on. And somebody's got to be watching and monitoring that tunnel to make sure there's no issues with cars, you know, putting it in reverse or putting their foot on the brake. And they can shut the wash off at that point and go go see what the problem is and get it fixed. And then you typically have to have another person who's uh, either the shift leader or the manager walk around, deal with customers, you know, deal with any issues that they have with their credit cards don't work or the card reader's not working or whatever happens. You got to have somebody who can kind of deal with customers at that point. Got it. Okay. So, so there, 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 there's at least two. And you want to do that from a safety perspective too. So you just don't want one person on site in case something happens to that person. You, you definitely want at least two. Got it. Okay. I want to jump back to the uh, the other revenue streams. One of the things I uh, one of the things I saw on your website, and I actually noticed when I went through this express exterior car wash by my office uh, last week, uh, was that they offered some type of monthly club, like an unlimited car wash club. And I saw you had something similar to that on your website as well, which is something I I love the reoccurring revenue model. I love it. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Is that a? I mean, does that make up a substantial portion of your of your income in this business? I mean, you know, can you give me a rough idea, like the percentage of folks that actually sign up um, for that type of club, and, and yeah. what, what the retention looks like, how long they stay a member? Yeah, it's 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 a really interesting model. It's starting to blossom in the car wash industry. I think in the last three to five years, people have sort of discovered this unlimited car washing model. And so they're offering it to their customers. And I would say probably, you know, we have to sort of estimate the number of customers we have because we don't really, it's hard for us to track customers because is a customer an individual or a customer with two cars? Is that two customers or whatever? But we estimate probably 45,000 customers per, per car wash. And each one of ours has probably between about 7 to 8% of those customers are unlimited customers. And so... Um, you know, from from that standpoint, the revenue that those people produce is much higher than seven percent of the revenue because it's a more consistent sure. revenue, right? So one problem with car washing is the weather. So in certain parts of the country, you can get into these weather bands where it's cloudy and rainy for weeks. Well, that's going to really impact your ability to make money in the car wash business. And you know, the the unlimited plan gives people the ability to, um, you know, to the, those operators to get a consistent cash flow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they know they can count on so much money per month uh, every every month. So that's that's one of the good things about that. Um, the, depending on the price point, you'll see churn, um, you know, our, our churn. And, and it's hard for us to kind of track whether our churn is because people are quitting or their credit cards are expiring or they don't have money in their bank account. Um, but you know, right now we're kind of at the point where we're, we're replenishing the 
with new customers about the same amount that's churning out. So okay, got but it. But it's it's turned out to be a great program, and people, you know, in the car wash industry is starting to pick up on it, and more and more people are offering it. Got it. Got it. Okay. I want to dive into the numbers now, David. The, the, this is the exciting part, right? How much money can we really make if we own a car wash? But first off, before we dive into um, you know expectations as far as returns are concerned and things of that nature, and I know that can vary, so we're, we're just trying to put a general rule of thumb on what expectations are from a new car wash uh, operator that's getting into the space. Uh, but first, before we dive there, I want to talk about the average cost um, – that one might expect to invest on the front side to get a, a new car wash and express exterior model up and running. And I know a lot of that has to do with the price of the land. Um, that's a huge variable there, but uh, can you give us like a general idea uh, in a normal market in, in, uh, in America, what that might look like as far as a uh, all in front end budget to get one of these up and running, including the cost of land? Yeah, yeah, and you you definitely pointed out the land price is what what varies quite a bit, and the rest of it is relatively consistent. But you can get in like a low price point for an exterior express car wash. I would guess would be about two and a half million dollars, and then you know it can go as high as four and a half to five million, depending on the land and how big you build it and what else goes on. So it can be anywhere, probably in that that range. We've got a guy here in Denver who built one. Um, he bought a corner lot. It was an old tire store and he had about, I'm, I hear between eight and $10 million in this car wash and it's a double tunnel. So he has actually two tunnels in the building. So when he gets really busy, he, you know, he doesn't have a line mm. and, um, it's doing well, it's doing really well. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's making money yet, but you know, he's getting his numbers up there where I think he probably will here soon. But, uh, yeah, it can, it's, it's more than people imagine. I mean, if people come to me and say, I want to get in the car wash business. And the first question I ask them is, well, what do you think it costs? And, <laughs> you know, and usually it's in the hundreds of thousands, you know, is this the one we 300,000 or, and then you tell them and it's just a shock factor. I'll ask you, Kevin, what, what, what was your expectation? Yeah, probably, you about, it was probably, in about that a, range? probably about a million and a half. So, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was yeah. still very low. I, w- I was assuming probably, you know, anywhere between one to 1.2 for the equipment. And then, uh, you know, let's say, you know, up to $300,000 for a, a decent out parcel, uh, and yeah. a, you know, decent market, I guess, an average market. Um, but yeah, it looks like I was way off as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, here, here in Colorado, you know, I'm, I'm spending between, you know, if I'm spending, anywhere less than three quarters of a million dollars for a piece of land. It's yeah. probably not the type of land I want, to be honest. I mean, and the interesting thing is, if you remember the old days, the the spray wands, I say the old days, they're still out there, but, uh, you know, where you go to the self-serve car wash, where you drive it into a bay and there's a wand and a brush there and you stick quarters in the machine. Yep. Now, those, th- those car washes were essentially real estate investments that people made. So they would buy a piece of property, half an acre, they didn't know what to do with it, so they just would put one of these self-serve in-bay automatic car washes on the site, leave it for five or ten years, and then scrape it off and sell the land. Ah. So that was a that was a pretty effective real estate strategy for a lot of people. But those were not A sites; those were B and C sites, and um, you know people could afford. You know, it was wasn't a big investment dollar wise, but they were betting on the future that the land price was going to go up. But these, you know, when you think about these types of car washes, these are retail. These are retail uh, operations. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you want to compete with the big boys when it comes to spending money on land. And it's something you can't move. I mean, these things, one of the things that make bankers really nervous is these car washes are classified as special use car washes. So if I made an investment with you, Kevin, on mobile home parks or groups, that land, if something goes wrong, right, with that investment, they can use that land for something else, right? It's 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 reusable for the most part. Sure. A car wash is is built to be a car wash. You can't do anything else with that building. Uh, you can scrape it and use the land, but again, that might only be a third of the overall investment. So bankers, you know, traditionally have been kind of nervous about these these special use or one time use individual use types of investments, and. Um, you know, so they, so that that's why you can't you can't pick these things up and move them. If you picked a bad location, um, you know, you you went you went behind the Seven Eleven instead of next to it or whatever. <laughs> you know, you can't you can't fix it, and and you're going to struggle with volume and struggle with people getting to know where you're at uh, forever. So that that's why picking a site is probably the most important decision you make when it comes to 
investing in car washes. Well, now we have that wonderful business model of the sign spinner that stands out in the corner. So I guess if you pick an inferior location, you just hire a bunch of sign spinners to, you know, stand out in traffic and direct people in, right? <laughs> I think you could. Yeah. Yeah. I've not tried that. I've, I've not, not had to bring myself to that. I, we, we've been fortunate with the sites we've picked. So, but yeah, yeah, I guess that that would be one one way to <laughs> yeah, try right. to, to to try to fix the problem. I want to talk about the financing side. You mentioned about banks. Uh, you know, they, they they've been uh, up until recent times somewhat nervous about this business model. So, what does financing look like? Assuming that there's a strong borrower, um, you know, that's ha- that has cash reserves, that has a capital required to invest or to develop one of these sites. We're talking, you know, two and a half to what do you say, four or five million dollars. What do the typical financing terms look like? What, what's available out there uh, for this type of product? Yeah, lo- lots of guys are able to go SBA route since okay. you're building a business and hiring employees. So I would say the majority of individuals like me who are just, you know, trans- I, I don't, you know, I, I, I didn't have a lot of money to start with, but I had enough money saved up where I can make an investment. And um, so, you know, you can go the SBA route, which only requires about a 20% cash requirement. Uh, the bank will take 50% and then SBA will take 30%. And so, and then the bank has a first position and the SBA takes a second position. So banks like that because it puts them in, sure. in into the project for 50% of, of the project cost. And um, so they, you know, lots of, lots of banks will kind of steer you to that. I had an option on my third one because we had a pretty good track record of going either direction. And I just decided although I don't like dealing with all the, the, the regulations that go around the SBA, it was nice to only be able to put down 20% of the project cost. Mm-hmm. No, that, that sounds like a great program. Um, it's, it's, I mean, for the bank and for the borrower, uh, for everyone involved, right. to win-win. I, I want to talk about, you know, this is such a hard question to ask because, again, there's so many variables here. Everyone has different expectations from the uh, from the investor side. But, you know, when we go into an investment, we have um, specific returns we're looking to achieve uh, on an annual basis and an over, overall return on our investment, you know, depending on how long we intend to hold a particular property. But, what is the not general rule of thumb? That's a bad term to use, but just what you know, maybe you or just the average uh, car wash developer that's looking you know, to create that retail experience. Are they looking? Is, is it possible to achieve double digit annualized returns on your on your capital investing in yes. one of these car washes? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a pretty reasonable expectation, and you know, and I think most guys, you know, if you look at cash on cash investment, which. I've got some friends who are in the real estate business that teach me these things because okay. I didn't know. Cash I don't cash. know anything that, that's about that. That's the metric I like to use. So cash, okay, and, yeah. that's real money in my pocket based on the you know the amount of capital I had to outlay to get into the project. So I like cash on cash. That's a real number. Yeah, and so I, I this third wash I actually invested with guys who are pretty experienced investing in, in real estate, and so that's kind of the number they were thinking about and using. And their their metric was could I get my money back within the three year time frame? And the answer is yes, you can. And and that's being relative. Wow. I'd say that's relatively conservative. I think for the most part. I mean, we were we were lucky. So the sites we picked were high volume sites, and not everybody has high volume sites like we have. But we were profitable in our second month. So um, you know, expense wise, we didn't have to put any more money into it. By the second month, we were already profitable. But ours are kind of on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, when it comes to volume, so we we were fortunate with that. Not everybody is right. There's a majority of people that that invest that do okay with it. There's some car washes that have shut down because they've gone bankrupt, and some people have done very well with it. So it's it's like any other business. Um, but there's there's some things that are really appealing to it, right? There's no accounts receivables, so you get your money up front. You know, it's it's a cash business or it's a credit card business. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't you don't deal with receivables. It's it's a capital intensive business. Uh, so there's a high capital cost that you put up front, and then your incremental cost of washing a car, you know, is not much money at all. It's a dollar or two, depending on how you calculate it. So it's just the cost of the electricity, the water, and the chemical are your variable cost, and those costs are not as you know not as large as maybe your labor costs. So you know, getting getting cars in there, getting the volume, you know, once you hit a certain point in the month, then any car you wash after that, you know, most of that becomes becomes profit. I'm assuming uh, capital improvement or capital replacement reserves are pretty significant in this business. As equipment wears out, as machines need to be upgraded or replaced, uh, is that an accurate uh, uh, assumption? Yeah, okay. yeah, I would think so. Yeah, we, we planned on a 10-year life for our equipment, and we're okay. in year 12, and so now we're, you know, we're seeing some things break. We were actually up last night working on some equipment. 
um, that I probably need to replace. I should have replaced before our winter time. Our winter time here in Colorado is our busy time. So I probably should have replaced this equipment during the summer. So we're going to have to find a day or two that we can do some equipment replacement. We, we, we actually, we set aside money and our bank actually requires us to set aside money for, for maintenance. And I like to keep a, a, a capital reserve for maintenance in the bank. It's a, it's actually in a separate account that they, they established. But that way I know if I have to do something, I, I don't have to worry about it. I've saved the money and I can go ahead and pull the trigger on it. Okay, got it. Now, you had mentioned uh, the old school car washes, like the, the, the bay with like the wand washer and the scrub brush. Those were typically just uh, kind of land plays, right? They were BC locations. Uh, those things are easy to erect, and they could essentially cover their holding costs, right? I mean, that, that's yeah. what a lot of these investors are looking to do. You can almost, couldn't you assume, I mean, based on what you just mentioned there, the fact that you guys look to recoup your original investment within three years, and that's pretty conservative, um, assuming that that is the norm, let's say three years, I mean, you could almost look at your investment also in a similar manner. Because if you're making your money back in three years, then at some point in time, if you decide that you don't want to be in the car wash business and you've got that A location in front of a uh, you know, a four or six lane highway in front of a Walmart or a Target, you know, a very attractive out parcel that a bank would love to be in. Um, isn't there some upside there or some higher and better use at some point in time, possibly? Possibly, possibly. Okay. But, you know, I mean, uh, let, let's say I invested $750,000 in an acre of land. Maybe, maybe that's worth now a million and a half. So say say it doubled in 10 years. You mm-hmm. know, I don't, I don't know if that's reasonable or not, but but you know the 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 proceeds I'm going to get from the land is nothing compared to the proceeds the if I sell the, if if I sell the business. Oh, sell the business, right? Right. Yeah. Sell the and so the, there there's a lot of private equity right now getting into the car wash industry because they see this and they say there's there's tremendous cash flow here and it's a it's a relatively fragmented industry. So you're seeing there's probably maybe three to five big consolidators in the market in the U.S. now that are snapping up car washes. And the multiples that you're looking at for car washes right now are extremely high. And so you're much better off selling the business as a business rather than, you know, think about it as a real estate investment. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Okay. A few other questions I had. And uh, one would be... um, what what type of advice would you give someone that's looking to get into this business? I mean, I I know that you say people approach you all the time. I'm assuming. I mean, you you, you host a podcast on car wash investing. Um, you sit on multiple different boards uh, within the car wash industry, so you probably have a lot of people that are approaching you. Just like when you were first getting started, you were approaching others in this industry, asking for advice, asking for you know wisdom or feedback on how you can dive into this business. So, what is some advice for those that are listening in today? If they have an interest in this business, but really haven't spent too much time researching it, but have an interest in learning more, what advice? Would would you offer them? Yeah, there's a lot of places you can go get information. The International Car Wash Association has got a great website. It's carwash.org, which can kind of get you started, you know, finding out about what the business is about, what type of model is more interesting to you if you want to be a full service car wash operator or if you want to be Exterior Express or whatever. You know, you kind of get you started in that area. And then, you know, I would look up your local, if you live in a larger town, see if you got a local car wash distributor that you can visit with. Those people are incented to kind of help you understand the industry and the car wash business and what it's about and what it's, what it's not about. Um, you know, so there, there are places that you can go to, to get information. Uh, the, the, the distributor was probably the best place for me to go because they were local. They understood the market. They had access to the equipment providers and the chemical providers. And, you know, they've done a lot of work in trying to assemble what they consider to be the best of the equipment providers, the best of the chemical providers. They service the car washes. They've got an idea of sites that might be available. They've uh, got idea of of car washes that might be for sale in the market. And so, um, you know, you can learn a lot from that. Um, You know, the the other piece of advice I would give people is a lot of people think it's passive income and it's absolutely, it's just, it's not. I think, you know, they go back to the concept, Kevin, that you were talking about where, you know, you, you go pick up your quarters at the end of the week and take, <laughs> yeah, right. take them to the bank. A few of them fall out on the way, but, you know, you go ahead and take it to the <laughs> bank and, uh, you know, and, and that's all you got to do. And, and those, those self-serve car washes were somewhat structured like that, but anything with a tunnel, anything with a long tunnel, it's a very operationally intensive business and people are blown away when I take them through the equipment room and I take them through the tunnel and they see everything that's involved in, 
in in a car wash, and then they realize you know that that these things can fall apart. The quality can fall apart pretty quick if you're if you don't have either the right manager, the right operations manager, or if you're not on site making sure that your standards are being kept up. Um, and you can you can go to a car wash, and if you've been in the business, you can tell pretty quickly the ones that are managed by an absent owner versus somebody who's active in the business. Got it. So is it unrealistic for a new investor that's maybe buying their first or opening up their first car wash to have it be out of state? I mean, it can are there third-party management companies that specialize in this niche that one can rely on to oversee their, their car wash investment if they're not local to it? Yeah, there's probably not, but you could probably get involved in car wash groups. I mean, there there are investment groups that that are you know looking for people that want to invest in car washes, and if you're not interested in running them, that's probably the best way to go ahead and, and get involved in it. Um, there there are no management companies per se right okay. now, um, you know, out there in our industry. That's probably something that'd be interesting to do. But um, you know, I think I think at this point. You know, you can you, you you can find people who are are you have guys like me that are looking for money who would like to go build twelve of them, and there are people like like me out there. Gotcha. No, that makes sense. And then uh, <clears throat> lastly, if someone is just they they just want to build their own, like you built your first one. I think it was two thousand six. You had mentioned. Um, Back when you built that first one, were you the operations manager of that first location? And really, where I'm going with this question is, if one if a person wanted to just open one location, let's just I'm going to use your first location as an example based on your traffic and the income that particular location generates. Does that one location generate enough income for you to justify having a operation operations manager on staff or on payroll for that one location, so that you can not necessarily be passive, but not have as much of a involved you know daily operations approach to that business or do you have yeah. to have more scale than just that one no it, it helps to have more scale but you can hire a site man you call that person a site manager okay. and you pay him a little bit more money than than maybe you normally would but yeah you could have a person who's responsible who understands you know it's it's a real unique skill set that you're looking for you're looking for somebody who's good with customers somebody who's good with employees and somebody who's really good with working on mechanical equipment. yeah yeah and so that's that, <laughs> that's uh, a that's tough a real, combination <laughs> it's real tough but you know if you get a person like that yeah you you should be able to fund that person without too much issue and uh if they're good responsible and like the business and care about the business then uh they, they should do a good job for you Okay, fantastic. Now, I want to ask you a question I'd like to ask all of our guests on the show, David, and that is, if you can go back into day one, I want to use day one as being like when you first considered investing in car washes, or the day you determined that like car washes, that was going to be the investment that you're going to focus your time and effort on to. Go back to day one, give yourself some advice after knowing what you know today. What would that advice be? Yeah, I, I made the classic mistake, and me and my partner both made the classic mistake of thinking that we could operate these while having another job. And uh, there was so much to do and so much to learn that it became very difficult to keep my job and run the car wash. And my, my other partner was more of a passive partner, and I, I was more the active partner, but it was taking up all my time. And so I realized pretty quickly that this was not a passive investment. And if I was going to run this correctly, and my fear was this was my life savings. So, you know, if this thing goes bad, I'm living somewhere else and I got to figure out what, what to do next. And so I, w- I wanted to make sure it was successful and worked well. But uh, it, it's it's just not anything, anything along the lines of a tunnel is not a passive income, in the income stream. I think you've got to be involved at some level. You don't have to be there every day, but you've got to kind of watch the business. You got to make sure it's doing what you want it to do and, and keep the standards you want to keep. So that would be the advice okay. I'd give myself. And so, if you were to scale, you'd mentioned that you've got your third location that you're that you're opening up here shortly. Uh, but if you had the capital, you would expand and open up twelve more locations, or you know whatever that number might be. Would they all be within a certain radius or a general vicinity of where you're currently based out of today? Or would you start looking, would you broaden your horizons a little bit and look a little bit further out or reach into different states? Uh, it, it's more difficult. We have people that do that and then do it very successfully. I've got some friends who own car washes in Denver who are building one in South Dakota right now. Wow. Now, one of the one of the partners, I think, is going to move up there. He's, a, he's an airline pilot. He's one of an example that he's kept his job 
but he's been able to, in his off days, since he has more days off, and he's, he's hired a right team, but he's an example of a guy that's been able to do both. But I think he's moving up there. So he's you see people that, that do that, but not, not that often. I think you don't get advantages of management synergy. You don't get an operations manager that can visit all the sites. You don't have a maintenance team that can go around all the sites. And when you get larger, you want to be able to take advantage of, you know, the, the economies of hiring certain labor and actually specializing the labor. You lose some of that when you go multi-state. Sure. No, but, that- but, it, but, but if you're big enough, you can do it. Uh, there are some chains that are 250 car washes. Obviously, they're nationwide. They're able to do it. Who are the big dogs in the industry? Are they like the top three guys that, that own, you know, a significant percentage of this business? Or Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the their business ownership in the overall the industry is only maybe 1% or 2%. So it wow. still is very much a fragmented industry, right? It's very much a mom-and-pop industry. It's guys like me who had a little bit of money who were able to invest in it and, you know, get a loan and make my investment and, and you know, run a small business. It's kind of the – it is very much mom and pop. Now, that will change to, to an extent as this private equity uh, wave comes into the industry, but it won't change considerably. I still think it'll be primarily a small business owner. But, yeah, there's there's three or four chains. One of them is Mr. Car Wash out of Tucson, Arizona, and they're backed by uh, an individual named Leonard Green. I don't know if you know, know that capital group but they they back them and they're about 240 units right now nationwide the largest car wash owner group in the world is called imo imo um international car wash management group i think is what they're called and they own about 800 to 900 washes in europe and they've come here to the u.s and now they've got about maybe i think 100 to 110 and then there's a there's a chain in your neck of the woods in florida called zips car wash and so they're they're going around consolidating car washes and and then you get into the 30 or 40 unit chains and then that's that's you know I maybe mean, t- t- 10 years ago if you owned 40 car washes you were one of the top 5 you know uh, largest owners now it's you know if you have less than 10 people wonder what's wrong with you <laughs> so <laughs> Got it. Got it. Now that makes sense. That's very. It sounds very similar to the uh, both the mobile home park niche and, as well as even the self storage niche, where there's a couple large operators out there, but still very much a fragmented, mom and pop driven niche to where there's still a lot of opportunity for guys like you and me that are willing to roll up our sleeves and and uh, <clears throat> and dive in. So. Very much um, so. <clears throat> lastly, uh, Dave, I'd like to enter what I like to call the Golden Nugget segment of the show. And this is where we're going to kind of wrap things up for the day. And what I'd like to ask of you is if you had one final last Golden Nugget of advice or wisdom that you could leave with our listeners that may inspire and motivate them as they progress in their real estate investing career, what would that one last Golden Nugget be? Well, you know, I, I seem to be preaching to the choir when we talk about podcasts because, you know, people that listen to podcasts are people that are very interested in learning. And, and being better at what they do. And I love surrounding myself with people like that. That's why I have a podcast. That's why I like being on podcasts and talking to people. But I just think being a lifelong learner, I think the rate of disruption that we're going to see in our industries, whatever industry we're in, is going to increase. It's not going to decrease. So our ability to stay on the forefront of that and understand what's happening in our industries and being able to adapt to it, I think it's going to be a big component for our success. So I just, you know, I just love learning and I, I just encourage people to continue learning and um, and just kind of watch what's going on because a lot of these disruptions, like this whole unlimited plan, for example, is a little bit disruptive in our market. And some people didn't kind of catch on to it, you know, they, and then there's some, you know, I'm, I do very well with it and a lot of people in my market don't because they're not paying attention to it. So, you know, small things like that, I think will make a difference, but the speed in which the changes are going to come is going to increase, and we've got to make sure we stay on top of it. No, I think that that's great advice. And you know, mentioning podcast, I mean, the disruption that it's caused in general, but also the fact that it's free education. I mean, 10, 10 15 years ago, that'd be unheard of to actually teach somebody or give away value for free, not expect something right. in return, right? So right. It, it's a changing world that we're in, and I think that ongoing education, ongoing learning, is, is it's vital to your overall success as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a real estate investor, whatever it is that you do, um, you gotta continually learn on a regular basis. So, uh, David, this has been so much fun. I, I was, again, I was really looking forward to this. Uh, um, really, I, I haven't had any guests on the show that, that have expertise in this niche, so I'm incredibly um, uh, grateful for you joining us here on the show today. I think we've, we've 
covered a lot of ground. I mean, is there anything else, any other relevant information that you think a a listener that is just kind of poking their finger around, sticking their toe in the water a little bit about this niche that we didn't cover that you feel is relevant to them that they should know? No, I think, you know, just, just kind of work your way into it. I do. We, I've got a podcast. It's called The How of Car Washing, if I can plug it real quick. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, so if you want to learn a little bit more about car washing, that's a great place to start. It's thehowofcarwashing.com. And uh, you can reach out to me if you've got any questions. I'll be happy to kind of point you in the right direction. Uh, one thing that uh, our companies are going to start focusing on, I, one thing I, li- I like learning so much, I'm going to start creating some some training systems for car wash operators and owners, and well as people interested in investing in the car wash industry. So my uh, um, ultimate goal is to be able to have a place where people who are interested in investing in the car wash industry, where they can learn and get good information to make good decisions on whether or not that's a good fit for them, and if they decide it is a good fit, where do they go to get get help? So that's that's one thing we're going to work on. No, that's fantastic. Well, uh, David, really appreciate you being on the show. And for those that have an interest in in learning more about uh, David's group, and, and I think on your pod, your podcast as well, they, it can be found on levantebusinessgroup.com, correct, David? That's that's correct. That's okay, correct. so that's levantebusinessgroup.com. And Levante is L-E-V-A-N-T-E businessgroup.com. And Dave, that's all we have here for today. So really appreciate you joining us on the show. And uh, I wish you the best on all your future endeavors and all your future car washes, my friend. You take care, okay? Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate being on. Congratulations. Now you've got more of the best tricks of the trade in building massive amounts of passive income from real estate. For more amazing resources, visit realestateinvestingforcashflow.com. And we'll see you next Monday morning. <laughs>